Today's video was selected for you by my gorgeous patrons, so thank you very much to them for making this selection. And if you would like to be involved in future video polls and also have access to the Discord, the One Card Riff video every month and other privileges as well, check out the tiers. I will leave all the information down below. You could sit with your journal and you could be thinking about a problem that you're encountering and you can ask yourself, what is the one thing about this that I'm the most afraid to write? What is the thing that I'm holding back that I'm actually scared to commit to paper? And then you know what I'm going to say, write that shit down. Hello, my darling sunflowers. My patrons have blessed us again with a very, very interesting topic for this month's poll winner. I'm absolutely thrilled to be back here talking about journaling again because I absolutely love talking about journaling. I'm a total nerd for journaling. So let's get into it, okay? So... How can we maximize the potential of a journaling practice? There are lots and lots of people out there who are keeping a journal with some degree of regularity, but not all of them, I'm learning over the course of time, not all of them are convinced in any way that their journaling is really helping, that it is actually helping them see an improvement in their mental well-being, um, that it's even something that particularly gives them any sense of catharsis. So that's what we're going to get into today. How do you maximize the mental well-being potential of your journal as a tool for shadow work, for self-love, for self-care, you know, for, for therapy, for self-counsel, for self-soothing? I am big into this. I think your journal should be working for you. And if it's not, you're in the right place. This video is for people who are journaling, but they are not convinced that they're doing anything except recording how they feel. You know, they don't know if they're really seeing the benefit. So they've got a journaling practice. They just want to know how to up the ante. If you're someone who is hardcore procrastinating with your journal practice, or you really fantasize about being a journaler, but you haven't done it yet, you're going to need this other video that I made. Okay. The video is called Write About Your Life, How to Keep a Journal. And that one I think is much more geared towards helping people to make a start. Okay. So it explains to you how to choose a journal like how to literally choose a physical book. It explains barriers to regular journal writing. It explains how to keep journaling interesting so that you carry on with it. So if you're having those kinds of issues, please go and watch that video first. I know some of you are probably thinking, but Kellyanne, that's like an hour's worth of video and this one is a long video. Honey, if you want to get into a journaling practice, then you've also got to get into the habit of watching things that are going to be useful for you in terms of self-care and really absorb that information. Okay. Journaling is going to take a lot of your time. So if you're struggling to start journaling and you really want to, I think you've got an hour to spare on figuring out how to crack that nut. Okay. So go watch that, then join us back here. If you do journal, but you're like, is this just me writing down what's happened? Like what the, what is the point of this? this is the video for you. There is something that I talk about in that video that I just want to briefly mention here because it is so important, okay? Journaling, in my estimation, journaling should not feel like work. If you feel every time you go to open your journal that it's a task, it's something you need to tick off your to-do list, it's something that's going to take energy from you, it's going to rob you of time, you know, you're not feeling particularly great about digging into your journal, that's probably another good reason to watch that other video because I think I do my very best to try and help you to understand how to keep it fresh and experimental and interesting, but most of all, I really stress the idea that journaling should feel like a relief it should feel like puking when you have food poisoning. It should feel leisurely, decadent, fun, interesting. I don't think it should feel like this gargantuan task, another thing on the chore list, and you're like, oh yeah, I've got a journal today. I keep saying I'm going to. Oh, I've got a journal. If you're feeling like that about it, I don't think it's quite clicking the way it needs to be. For me, journaling, when I get to sit down and journal over a cup of coffee, out in a cafe, or on my bed, or sometimes at my bath caddy in the bath, wherever it is, I feel like, oh, oh, I get to journal. Okay. I really feel like that. That's where it's cooking on gas. If you're not getting that, you should be getting that. And there's lots of information in that video to help you to make journaling more engaging. Okay. So yeah. With that being said, there is a six step guide I'm going to give you right now for making sure your journaling is actually working for you so that you can safely say without argument with yourself or anyone that your journal is a therapeutic tool. Okay. By the end of this video, I really want you to feel as though you understand how to make the most of journaling. 
So let's do it. Okay, step one. Step one is to set your intentions for your journaling practice. If you are already well within your journaling practice and you've been doing it for years, but you're looking for a refresh and you're looking to really maximize the benefits, again, this is for you. Set your intentions or reforge your intentions. Just stop and take some time to think about like, why am I doing this? What is it for? What am I trying to get out of it? If you're conscious about that, then that will pay back dividends, okay? One thing that it's really good to determine is what is the theme of your journal? Is your journal for everything? Is it a one-stop shop to be able to write about anything that you think and feel that you feel compelled to record? Or do you have certain journals for certain things? Maybe you have a spiritual journal. Maybe you have a journal for your food and fitness journey and your relationship with your body. You know, Maybe you have a finance or career journal. Maybe you felt like actually setting aside a journal for a specific theme, or maybe as I'm talking, you're thinking right now, like, huh, I really could do with just having the journal about one theme. So I know where I'm at with it. And I feel like I know what is going to be uh, you know, in it when I open it for review. A little bit later in the video, I'm going to talk about the importance of reviewing your journal entries, because I think if we're journaling for mental well-being and shadow work and self-love and all of that, it is important to review. Do bear in mind that if you've got a very specific theme for a journal, you will only be able to review that journal around that specific theme, okay? So if you have a journal only for spirituality or only for food and fitness, when you come to review, obviously it's going to have no context in terms of the rest of your life. It's only going to be for reviewing that subject. That's fine though. You know, some people do very, very well with themed journals where the first intention of a journal is to say, I'm only using this journal for shadow work. I'm only using this journal for gratitude. This is only the journal that I'm using about moving through this catastrophe that happened to me. And that's absolutely fine. There's so much goodness in that. You can also just have a journal that is a one-stop shop, okay? My main working journal that I use, I put everything and anything in there that I want to put in there. I write about things I'm grateful for. I write about things that have upset me. All of it goes in there, okay? Um, so set the intention in so far as what is the theme. Once you've figured out the theme of a journal, then you can figure out what you want to get from the practice of journaling. Is it just so that you can get your feelings out, get your thoughts out somewhere safe? Is it perhaps to help you to avoid oversharing your thoughts and feelings? Maybe you want somewhere to go that is more kind of like self-possessed so that you're not sharing everything before you've had time to really figure it out and come to terms with it yourself. Maybe that's been a problem for you. So the journal is you genuinely keeping your own counsel. Are you looking for a more heightened state of self-awareness? Do you find that it's actually really difficult for you to be self-aware and you really want to be able to look with the benefit of hindsight or look over your journal entries and be like, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. So it's really noticing your patterns, noticing your problems, etc. Maybe it's that. Maybe one of the intentions of your journal is around goal setting and recording your progress towards goals and then really feeling like when I achieve the goals, I have a place to also write that down. So it's about goal setting. It's about moving towards something. It's about creating a sense of momentum and success in your life. There's so many different reasons to journal. In my notes, for this video, I wrote down my intentions for journaling. So my intentions are, I want to pay attention to my patterns and issues. I want to be able to really like look at the journal entries that I've made and say, oh yeah, I do that. Oh yeah, I'm fearful of that, right? Oh yeah, I'm good at that, you know? So I'm doing that. I'm also keeping my own counsel. So I don't like oversharing. I don't like feeling that I'm consistently burdening a certain person or a certain group of people with something that I actually want to repeat quite a lot. I'm quite an ad normal repeater of things. And Jimmy two times, who got that nickname because he said everything twice, like... I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. And so I really want to, like, reduce the stress on people in my life. Um, it's also a relaxing form of self-care for me. It's how I tune back in and centre within myself. It's a tool to help me with my therapy. I can refer to my journal entries to talk to my therapist about what's going on. So I really enjoy that part of it. You know, so there's a lot of different things there. The other thing to think about when you're considering your intentions for your journaling practice is what don't you intend? There's going to be things that you intend for your journaling, and then there's going to be things that you might want to write down that you don't intend, okay? So for example, I don't intend to journal daily. I just want to be able to journal whenever I want. So I don't really like routine. I want to be able to go a couple of weeks without journaling if I don't feel like it. And then I want to be able to journal 16 pages in a day if I feel like it. And yes, <laughs> I do sometimes feel like it. Another thing for me is I don't intend to pressure myself to write down everything that's happened or everything I feel or every event that's occurred. 
I really hate that. And I talk about that in the other video that I mentioned earlier. Hate that. Okay. I want to be able to journal just about things that I feel I need to write down. Everything else, whether it was wonderful, whether it was terrible, if I don't want to write it down, I just won't. So I don't intend to put any pressure on myself in relation to what I might feel obligated to record. So that's something that I don't intend. Um, I don't intend for journaling to be something that I imagine is going to solve all of my problems, you know. Um, so there's certain things that, that you don't intend and do intend, okay. Um, so yeah, think about that. Consider that for definite. Step two, this is a really important step if you are a journaler, but you worry that like it's not useful, it's not giving you anything, okay. Ask reflective questions push yourself, challenge yourself to go where you wouldn't ordinarily go. This is where you really start to work the muscle, the, the mental well-being muscle with your journaling practice. And it's been really, really vital for me. Ask yourself reflective questions about whatever it is that you're feeling moved to write down. OK, so you can ask yourself questions, just general questions to get the party started. Like, what am I most grateful for today? What challenge did I face today? And how could, how can I overcome that challenge when it appears in the future? Uh, what, what did I learn about myself today? You know, things like that, basically. Um, you can also look at if you're journaling about a specific problem and you're just venting, venting. There's nothing wrong with just venting. Just venting is fine. Sometimes I just want a good vent. But one thing I try to do when I'm addressing a specific problem, especially if I've addressed it in my journaling before, is to ask, why do I keep returning to this problem? What makes this problem cyclical? What is the thing that keeps it coming back? I ask myself, what could I do today or tomorrow or for the coming days to make this problem easier on me? Um, and there's also things that are really intense, like you could sit with your journal and you could be thinking about a problem that you're encountering and you can ask yourself, what is the one thing about this that I'm the most afraid to write? What is the thing that I'm holding back that I'm actually scared to commit to paper? And then you know what I'm going to say, write that shit down. Okay. There is a lot of gold in that. Does it feel emotionally high risk? Yes. Does it also feel tremendous? I think quite often, yes. Okay, it's giving us the keys to our doors within. So I think that's really powerful. You can also ask things like, what is really scaring me about this situation? You can be writing about an emotion that you're experiencing and you can think to yourself, what's behind this emotion? Is there anything behind it that is less comfortable for me to address? And how can I address that? Um, you know, you can also really look at how you responded to or reacted to something and do an analysis of that. Ask yourself, like, what was wrong with that? What do I wish I would have done differently? How will I address that differently in the future? So sometimes we get into a pattern with our journaling where we are just recording what's happened. We are just recording how we feel and we step away from the journal entry or several over the course of weeks. And we think, I'm not getting anything from this. I feel more frustrated because all I've done is write about the pit that I'm in. You know, where's the ladder? Where's the rope? How can I get out of this pit? I think we do that by really challenging ourselves, by asking ourselves these questions, by giving ourselves these prompts and these directions to look deeper, to ask more diligent questions. And so if you know, I just open up my journal and I write what I write ad nauseum. You know, maybe I feel a little bit of light relief, but I feel like, how's it ultimately helping? Is it just a time suck? Maybe it's because you're not taking your journal and saying, OK, I really want to buy a ticket and I want to have taken a ride by the time I finish this. I want to ask myself the question that I don't really want to answer. I want to ask myself the question my friend asked me the other day and I was struggling to answer it when they asked me. I want to go into something that I'm exploring in my therapy. Why just wait for the therapy session? Why don't I explore it in my journal and then bring that to my therapy? So you're actually giving yourself a bit of a task there. And that can be super powerful if you feel like my journaling is just like the train staying on the platform. I'm not really getting from it the fullness that I imagined and that I fantasized about when I decided to journal. And that's pissing me off. If that's pissing you off, take it further. Let it feel a little bit risky. Let it get a little bit crunchy. You know, you can always stop if you feel like deeply uncomfortable and you're like, I don't like sitting alone journaling about this. I think I need to talk to a friend. I think I need to address this in my therapy. I feel like I don't want to go as deeply with this right now as I thought I did. Then stop. Then stop. Just write. I don't want to write about this anymore. It's not feeling safe and stop. But I think what people don't do a lot of the time when they're frustrated about their journaling practice is they don't even start. <laughs> you know, they're just like, dear diary, today this happened and this is how I felt and that's it. 
And then they say, I don't know if journaling is really helping. And I'm thinking to myself, but are you going over the frontier? Are you going boldly towards the horizon? Are you like that person in the three of wands card in tarot that I, every time I see him, I just want to boot him in the back, like get over there, go on, get into the great unknown. I think it's got to be a little bit like that with journaling practice sometimes, guys. I really do. And some of the things that I've most challenged myself with with journaling have had the biggest and deepest payoff. Sometimes we basically just only go where we want to go with journaling. We stay in the back garden. We do not step out beyond the gate. And so if you know that you have been doing that, you've been circling around the garden and then coming in and saying, I don't really feel like I stretch my muscles, you know, it's because you didn't. It's because you didn't. Get a rain mac, go for a walk. <laughs> Get a rain mac, go for a walk. It's such an English thing to say. Like, I'm assuming you would need a rain mac, you know. <laughs> it's only the beginning of August and it's rainy and cold outside. So, yeah, get a rain mac, go for a walk. Get some sunscreen, go for a walk. Wherever you are, you know, go with this analogy, right? Ask yourself, am I circling around the garden and then saying, that wasn't really a great workout? I think a lot of journalers do that. And that's that's no good. You've got to freak yourself out a little bit. You've got to go where you feel like, oh, this could get a little, oh, this could get spicy. This could get interesting. Yeah, good. That's the sweet spot. That's where you want to be. Go there. Step three. Step three. Incorporate different types of journal entry. This is so powerful. It shakes things up. It gets you into a different kind of headspace. Not all of your journal entries need to start the same way. They don't need to look the same way. And if you're struggling to feel like you're getting benefit from journaling, maybe this is the key that's really going to be for you. Okay. So here's some different ideas for different types of journal entries that you can write. You can do like a stream of consciousness and that's just where you, you know, just just flow, basically. Just let your thoughts flow freely. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about the presentation. Don't worry about the grammar. I would argue it's good to do that 100% with journaling. All right, journaling is not something that's one day going to be in an art gallery. It's not going to be printed for your grandchildren's grandchildren. It's just something that you need, okay, for yourself. So yeah, stream of consciousness. On the other hand, you could do a strong theme. You could choose, okay, I'm going to theme this journal entry. I'm going to write about this one thing, you know, or I'm just going to write, it's like a concept entry, right? So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I wrote a themed entry. I've written a few themed entries recently. They're just about money. And I title them something to do with money. As everybody knows, money is my shadow work final boss. Everybody has one. Okay, mine's money. For some people, it's sex. For some people, it's death. For some people, it's religion. For me, it's, it's, it's dough, baby. It's the cold, hard cash, okay? So I've done that. A couple of days ago, I revisited a classic old album that I've got a lot of feeling attached to. If anybody's wondering what the album was, it was Vespertine by Björky 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 Björk. Okay. Uh, amazing album. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to do a concept themed entry where I just write about what is coming up for me as I re-listen to this magical baller of an album. Anything like that is great, okay? Lists. Lists are really good, right? Lists of things you want, lists of things you're afraid of, lists of places you've been, lists of things that you're worried about, lists of clothes that you're wearing right now, things you're listening to, things you want to cook, you know, things you wish you'd said in certain situations, you know, that kind of thing. Write all your trapping bits down there, okay? Uh, mind maps, mind maps, strategizing, you know, anything like that. You can take a two page spread in your journal. Don't be afraid and really like try and figure something out. Get a little bit like big swinging dicks of corporate strategy in your journal about your life goals, about your problems, about your plans. You can do journal prompts. You can go online. There's tons of journal prompts. I've written hundreds of journal prompts. I will leave you some links to my old blog down below where I have provided for my readers lots and lots of journal prompts. So that's a really good thing to do. You can write letters. Letters are amazing. Write letters to your matron goddess. Write letters to your former self, to your inner child. Write letters to the parts of yourself. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm going to leave another video down below about working with the different parts of your psyche. Okay, get a little bit internal family systems on that shit. I love doing that recently. I love going into my journal and doing what I call holding a board meeting. I might talk about that in a video because I know loads of people that watch me love working with their psyche as parts. I love holding a board meeting and finding out what all of my parts of myself think about a certain subject. That is so useful. So definitely you can write letters to your different parts of yourself. You can write letters back to yourself from those parts. You can write letters to your future self. You can write letters to people you don't even speak to anymore. You can write letters to people that aren't even alive anymore. Letters are so potent when you're looking to journal for mental well-being. 
I would also recommend the puking and brain dumping and all of that stuff. Like just literally blur, right? Okay, just vent. Do what I call the stabby writing. You know, the stabby writing where you're like, fuck you. And brain dumping, brain dumping is great to do when you first wake up. Um, it's good for that liminal space. You know, it's good for just like whatever comes to mind, just dump it all out. You know, if you feel like you want to write something really meaningful or you just want to do something really meaningful with your day, but you've got a lot of stuff going around in the brain. You've got things that you need to get from the shop. You've got this thing that's kind of irritating over here. And you're kind of thinking, oh, I need to get in the zone. I need to get in the zone. Brain dump that shit. Just put at the top of the journal, brain dump, and then go blah, 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 blah. I'm worried about this. I keep forgetting I need to do this. This is bothering me. I have an itch on my knee. You know, I need to remember to change the bedding today. You get to use your journal for anything and everything. Brain dumping is not other to the process of using the journal for mental well-being. In that moment, you're utilizing your journal for mental well-being because you're giving yourself the mental space to be able to pass out what is going on and what needs to happen. So it's very obvious to me that even just a simple brain dump that you may never read back over is a huge benefit for you mental well-being wise. And I personally love a bit of a brain dump. I love starting a journal entry with like, I don't fucking know what is going on, but I've just got a lot of shit on my mind. So I'm just going to like, I'm just going to sketch it out. I'm just going to, you know, really sort of describe every little thing so I can feel like I then can decide what is the priority, where do I want to direct my focus? Because right now I can't direct my focus. And it's okay to use your journal for that. You can use your journal in a ton of different ways. I really, really want to posit that to you. You can just write lists of adjectives. You know, you can write anything. You can open your journal and you might just be feeling really anxious, really just like overwhelmed. And you might decide, okay, I'm just going to describe what I see out of the window. I'm just going to describe like a scene um, from my dream last night. I'm going to write down about a movie scene and why it's so important to me. You can do anything in there because sometimes your journal is just to settle your nervous system in that moment. And sometimes your journal is to strategize for an issue you have. And sometimes your journal is to write the thing you never thought you'd even say to anyone. You didn't even realize it's how you felt. It's so profound. It's so deep. Please don't think all of that stuff can't live side to side in the same book because it can. Step number four, review and reflect. I think this is basically the thing that makes a meal of it, guys. Reviewing and reflecting on the entries in your journal. Honestly, if you want to use your journal for mental well-being and you want to have that level up, here's what to do in that regard, okay? Regularly reviewing your past entries. So what are you looking for when you're looking at your past entries? Not every single entry is going to be equal in merit when you're reviewing. Don't forget, like I just said, sometimes you just want to brain dump. Sometimes you just want to write the same sentence 15 times just to clarify it for yourself. So not every journal entry is going to be like an excavational dig where you're like, oh my God, this is so big. This is so fruity. Not everything is going to be like that. But when you review back over your journals, you can look for patterns in your thinking. You can look for recurring themes, recurring worries, things that you didn't realize at the time while you were journaling. But when you look at 18 or 25 or 50 journal entries in a row, you begin to see and you're like, ha, huh, that keeps being the issue. I keep writing about that. That's where it's really, you know, doing something for you. You can reflect on your thoughts and your feelings and your actions that you wrote down in order to understand yourself better and really sort of clarify what are the areas for growth here. That is a really big thing. So here's some of the things to remember when you go through your journals regularly and you kind of review them. OK, the main stuff that you complain about is important to notice. The main things that you seem to enjoy or that you seem to crave more of might be good to notice. Look at the key questions, like I said, that keep coming up. What are your queries that you can't seem to be able to answer? What are the repeated words or phrases that keep coming up in your journal? Do you notice that there are times of the month, times of the moon phase, um, times in terms of where you are location wise, where you feel more or less mentally stable in your journal entries? It's really good to notice as well anything that can be made into an actionable. When I go back through my journals and I actually like to just leisurely, it's not like a really official thing. I just sit there with an old journal and I just read through it. 
I love looking at actionables. I love looking at things I said I was going to do, but I kept not doing. I love looking at things I said I wanted to change multiple times, but I never took any steps. And then I can start to get very clear about what those steps would be. I really like noticing what the emotional and material achievements have been as well. So it's not just looking at the work that has been left unfinished and being like, oh, yeah, I kept saying I was going to do that, but I didn't. No, it's also very much looking at my journal from the perspective of thinking, I don't have that problem anymore. That problem that I was writing about six months ago, I smashed it. I smashed the granny out of it. I don't have that anymore. I did it, right? So you give yourself that credit for what has been achieved. I love doing that. I love looking back over my journal at a really, really concerning time when I really didn't know my ass from my elbow and thinking, well, I certainly know my ass from my elbow now. And that is a reason to celebrate, okay? So you definitely can look at that. That's really exciting. I think, you know, you can do reviews sporadically. You can do them routinely, however you want to do it. But it's definitely good to look back. And the findings from your reviews can be written in your current journal. You don't need to write them somewhere else. You can write them in your current journal. Just make sure that you use a sticky tab so you can go back and reference the review. You know, you also don't need to write any notes from a review. I like sometimes just sitting and reading my journal like a book. I read an old journal like a book. I take it out. I read a few entries. It's kind of like a poetry book or a reference book of some kind where I might just sit there and I'll read a few entries from three or four years ago, five or six years ago and be like, huh, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that. I'm thinking that again recently. That's interesting. Why has that come around? And I just have a little muse to myself, okay? You can just have a little think. You don't need to make it into like, oh, right, you know, every three months I have a journal review and it's really official and serious. Doesn't have to be like that. Does not have to be like that. You can make it very, very chill. Doing reviews of your journals does give you the benefit of distance. You know, I think many, many times when I'm writing in my journal, I'm not really noticing revelations as I'm writing. I sometimes do. Sometimes literally as I'm writing a sentence, I go, oh my goddess. Okay. That's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing that I just fucking wrote that I need to pay attention to. But a lot of the time it's not like that. I'm just writing, you know, I just, I feel compelled. And so I write. Um, it's only later in the review that I can mine the gold. And that's really, really a beautiful thing. I love doing that. Step number five, my darlings, file your journals. Okay. This is one thing when it comes to using your journal for mental well being and for really like getting honest and getting real that I think is a massive hindrance to people. They don't file their journals, they just like put them away in a box when they're done. They're not together. They're not, they don't have the start and end date on them. That's really hard for going back and looking through and reviewing and also for accessing material if you want to remember what happened in a certain situation or you want to go over something with a therapist or with a friend or whatever or with your gods um, you might want to access material it's really hard to do that if you just put your journals any old place or if you just throw them in a box and then put them in a cupboard behind another box you know if they need to be accessible let them be accessible and organize them all right so what i've written here is that i put the start and the end dates on the inside cover of all my journals the date that it starts and the date that it ends why because when i open my journal 5 years later and i want to review it i can clearly see what times were actually actually sort of being represented within that journal if i know i want to look back at the year before that thing happened i can go straight to that and i can know it you can also title your journals, okay? So when they're finished, only when they're finished, you might want to title them with something on the spine or on the inside cover that will help you to refer to them later. All the librarians in the audience right now are going to be like, oh, this is so librarian-y. And I know I have quite a few librarians in my audience. Get at me in the comments if you're a librarian. For some reason, librarians love me. And I take that as a huge compliment. Um, so yeah, you can title them, right? Like you can title them like friends episodes. You can title them things like uh, the one during lockdown, the one I wrote during lockdown, you know, uh, the last one from the old house, the one when I stopped talking to my parents, you know, you can write the main themes in the front, like so that you can remember I am so emotionally attached to my journals that I know most of them by sight, right? So like my toxic relationship journal, the toxic relationship journal, the main one that I was writing during that year. And if you don't know the journal I'm talking about, you haven't seen my toxic relationship video. I will leave that down below, but like buckle up because it's, <laughs> it's tough. Okay. Um, but yeah, that journal, I know that by eye. 
the minute I see it, the minute I put it in my hand, I know that that is the journal, you know, and I'm so glad I kept that journal. Oh, oh, it really helped me to get out of a bind emotionally, guys. And that's the whole point of doing journaling for mental well-being. It should be a tool, okay? So I know some of my journals by eye. I know every difficult thing I've been through. When I see that journal, there's an emotional link. But some of them is not so much an emotional link, quite honestly. Some of them I kept for three or four or five months because they were like shorter journals. I can't really remember what that's about. So I do like to write a list of just the key themes in the front you know? Um, so it will be like places that I was like Amsterdam, Paris, Bruges, and then a few things like, you know, friendship, beach life, summer or whatever. So I've got a reference straight away. You know, your journals are works of nonfiction, essentially. Um, they're very unpolished. They're not for public consumption, but in your life, you know, they are your memoirs, right? In your private space. So it's really good to be able to remember what the topics of them are about before you start having to read through them and trudge through them and, you know, maybe read material that you weren't up for reading or is not, not useful. So that's great. Don't forget also with the organizing, sticky tabs are your friends. Highlighters are your friends. Okay. Dividers are your friends. If you're someone that knows that your journals contain gold, and that you need to go back through them and you need to mine that material. Give yourself every possible ability in the stationary department, okay, <laughs> to be able to do that. I always keep sticky tabs in my pencil case. I really like to make sure that if I find something in my current journal or in a previous journal that I know I want to work through, I know I might want to reference again, I've got a sticky tab right there with a little note on it that says what it's about. I have gone through and highlighted, taken a highlighter pen to previous tarot readings that I've written in my journals. That's another kind of entry, by the way, that's really good. Going back to, uh, is it step three? Going back to step three, yeah, incorporating different types of entries. That's a really good one, doing readings. Um, I've gone back through and I've highlighted the main advice from those readings. That's really, really great to do, guys. So yeah, don't forget highlighters, sticky tabs, all that stuff. That stuff is your friend. Every so often, I will put a sticky note in a journal to remind me of something that I feel is really important to remember that I didn't remember at the time, you know? Sometimes that will be just like adding, I might add actually in the journal entry where I was at the time because I'm I might have been in a foreign country in a specific situation and I might feel like that is relevant to the type of journal entry that I wrote, but there was nothing in the journal entry to state that I was there. That's very rare for me. Most of the time when I'm away from home, I will definitely write where I am at the top of the page. Um, again, so that when I look back, I have that sense of, you know, it's you're, in, you're your own administrator when you're a journaler for mental well-being. You want to be able to access the material that you put your heart and soul into so that you can go back and reread and remember and like really sit with yourself as you were at that point in your life. And sometimes there might be something you really want to remember. Like if you if you were really, really, really ill at the time, for example, you're just feeling like death and, um, you know, that there was something going on, but the journal entry doesn't state that and you want to make sure that's put in, just put a sticky tab in and, and just write like, this is the time that I had to go to hospital with that or whatever, so that you remember it, you know? Um, so yeah, that's that's useful to to note as well that you can go back and kind of embellish or flourish a little bit, not lots, but in terms of just like details that you want to make sure you get right in your brain. Step number five, practice self-compassion. Practice self-compassion when you're doing your reviewing, you're reading back through at the time when you're actually writing your journal entries. It's not an award-winning novel. OK, it's not like uh, an absolutely fully formed recipe for success. It's not uh, a TED talk that you're eventually going to have to give to people. It's not a sparkling resume <laughs> that you're going to have to give to employers. Um, it's not, you know, something that you would use to apply to prove that in some way you are mentally upstanding and you're always a delightful human. It's not you as the best version of yourself. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be that. OK, so as you're writing your journal, practice self-compassion, realize that this is a tool for puking, for self-awareness, for getting bold and honest in front of yourself. It's for confrontation. It's for consolation. It's for comfort. It is not so that you can make a show of it. It's not so you can make a song and dance and be like, and I'm this, and then I did this, and that was great. You're not trying to do that. Why are you trying to do that? Who are you doing that for? That's not going to be useful. The journal is not to prove anything to yourself. The journal is so that you can, at the time and with the benefit of hindsight, see what you feel, feel what you feel. 
know what you know, complain about what you don't know. You know, it's a companion. Please see the journal as a companion, a really close, intimate companion that really like knows and accepts you and is just ready for you to say whatever you want to say, however you fucking need to say it. And on the rereading, don't cringe. There's nothing cringe about journaling, okay? You know what's cringe? People that think journaling is cringe. People that say things like, oh, that's a lot of navel gazing. <laughs> cringe. They're fucking cringe. Those people, they're being cringe. Would you please fucking... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I lost my temper. Where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, no, I found it again. It's yeah. all right. <laughs> Always in the last place you look, hey? Sorry, I'm getting very animated now. You know what? Like... Some people need a little bit more than just raw dogging life without any fucking tools to get us through it. And I need to journal. And yeah, some of the stuff in there is like, oh, how could I? Ugh. But I love myself. I'm with myself. I know that that's not even all of me. Where I was at that moment when I wrote that journal entry that's making me cringe or making me get my back up about myself or my decisions, that journal entry is a freeze frame in time. And it's what I needed to write from that exact moment in time. In the multitudinous complexity of myself, there was that one moment where I sat down to write that one thing. That doesn't represent everything that I am. That doesn't represent everything that I feel about me or about somebody else. That was one time where I wanted to vent or I had PMT or I was just feeling really fucked up about something or I was really feeling very arrogant and superior and very, you know, I had a lot of indignation in me or whatever. That's okay. I prefer to see that as a useful record. It's a useful artifact that shows me where I was at that time, what might have been contributing to it. It's something that I look at with interest rather than something that I look at with this really strong sense of judgment and really like, oh, why would you ever write that? Oh, that's if anybody were ever to see that. Oh my God. You know, I don't want to be like that with myself. And so I, I guess I'm saying to you, don't be like that with yourself. Practice self compassion. The journal is going to have amazing things in it, beautiful things in it. And it's also going to have like some, <laughs> some things in it that you really wish you'd never written. Okay. Like that's, that's fine. That's the whole animal. Your journal is a place to get raw. It's a place to get messy. It's a place to get real. It's a place to just be with yourself in honesty in a way that maybe you don't feel like you can even do with anyone in your life. It's so powerful. And I want you to be able to access that power if you feel like you're not really getting that from it at this time. Well, my darlings, this has been my thoughts and feelings about how to make journaling useful for your mental well-being. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you have anything that you want to say about your own journey with journaling. Like, how is it working for you? What have been the problems? Was there anything in this video that made you feel like maybe there, there could be a bit of a breakthrough with journaling? If you would like to do a journal with me session together with my patrons, there is an afterthought episode dropping today to go alongside this video where I'm going to invite my doll faces and pop tarts on Patreon to do a journal with me session. We're going to do some journal prompts. We're going to support each other. It's a pre-recorded video so you can come in and do it whenever you want and you can do it as many times as you want. But I've done a few of these journal with me type things before over on Patreon and I love it. We're going to journal together. I'm going to journal, you're going to journal and we're going to get into it. So if you do feel that there's been a little bit of a resistance lately and you would like to experience journaling alongside me, come on over, be a pop tart or a doll face and get in on the afterthoughts action. Also, if you binge watch me in general, if you find that you've watched a lot of my videos and you keep coming back, first of all, please get subscribed if you're not subscribed. And second of all, you probably would love my Patreon, to be fair. Um, the higher up the tiers you go, the more access to videos you get. But essentially, there's a ton of one card riff videos, which everybody acts, gets to access. There's also a ton of afterthoughts videos, which the doll faces and pop tarts get to access. There's also a ton of live streams that have taken place since 2020. And that's something that the pop tarts get access to. But there's a few like tier wide live streams. There's two sets of praying nine day novenas that's available to everybody, all tiers. So like whatever happens when you access a tier on Patreon, whatever that tier is, whether it's um, cupcakes, doll faces or pop tarts, you get a lot of access to videos and also to audio offerings and affirmations and printables that never see the light of day outside of Patreon. So give it a thought, okay? If you would like to come and be with me for a month or for more than a month or whatever you want, 
you can claw a lot of extra material, okay? There's a lot of shit in Patreon. There's a lot of gold to be mine that I have made, that I've put my name on. Uh, some of it, very, very personal, okay? So get ready to get personal with me. If you become a patron, I will say. Don't forget that you can work with me, my darlings. I am a spiritual counsellor, a witchcraft mentor, a witchcraft author, and a humble slinger of tarot cards. So you can go over to my online store and get booked in with me, you know? And if you want to journal with me one-on-one, -on -one, check out my journal with me sessions. If you want to get cards read, check out my readings. It's all happening over at Planet Maddox. Thank you again so much for watching. Much love. You guys make me happier than a bird with a French fry. Blessed be. Mwah.